So we just finished up our unit on dividing decimals, right? We took our test. You feel pretty good about it? You'll get those back tomorrow, okay? Ms. Rotman has them graded. I just don't have them with me. I left them at home. So, you don't have to make corrections today. Be, if you missed any, be thinking about how to solve that process of dividing decimals. We're going to start our lesson with the flickers question. And what we're going to do is, so I need you to have your clicker ready. start with a very simple question about what we're about to learn about, which is the coordinate plane. And it's going to be this question. <clears throat> if you look up there, it says, I can use, oh, that's the wrong one. I just press the wrong one. Here it is. Sorry. How many quadrants does a coordinate plane have? And we'll put it on the graph so that you can see. So is it A6, B3, C2, or D4, and hold them high so I can see it. All right, so let's see. It is four, it is four. And if you didn't have it correct this time, we don't know who that is, that's, that's what I love about clickers is you can't tell who got it wrong, so you don't know, the Troutman knows. But for the student who got it wrong, this whole lesson is about helping you figure out everything you need to know about a coordinate plane. So we're going to transition from clickers, and I'm going to just introduce our lesson objective for the day. So after our lesson today, and you can set your clickers off to the side, after our lesson today, you will be able to use a pair of axes to define a coordinate system, understand the meaning of the meaning of the origin, x-axis, and y-axis, and apply your understanding to locate an ordered pair of numbers on a coordinate plane. So maybe some of you are thinking, I don't really even know what a coordinate plane is. It's okay if you are. Raise your hand if you're kind of unsure about what, an, what a coordinate plane is. Good, and that's what this whole lesson is about. I'm introducing the coordinate plane to you. After this lesson, you will be able to say confidently, Ms. Trailman, this is what a coordinate plane is. And I can graph these points to make an image or whatever it is that we're doing for our math lesson. So we're going to take a look at our coordinate plane on the board. This whole thing right here is a coordinate plane. And I know that you noticed my vocabulary bars. So before I can even label this, before I can tell you that this is what this is, this is what this is, I want to go through what each of these vocabulary words means. So we're going to take a second and we're going to talk about what the origin means. Can you raise your hand if you think you know what an origin is? Mason. Nice. It's where both lines meet. That's an excellent example. It's also the beginning of something, right? Origin. So an origin is where X and Y cross and it's the starting point of both of our lines, okay? So I want Mason Ryder, take our origin card and I want you to label where our origin is. From that definition, it is where X and Y axis cross. Excellent. It is right smack dab in the center. And it is and we're going to learn about what an ordered pair is later today in the lesson, but it is identified by 0, 0. And I know you might not know what this means yet, but you will. All you need to know right now, this very second, is origin is where the X and the Y cross. Okay? So our next vocabulary word is going to, or vocabulary term, is going to be the Y axis. Somebody raise your hand and tell me what the Y axis is. Can you mind raise your hand and tell me? Near. It's like when the vertical line crosses the goes down. Excellent. It, well, it's the vertical line. It Does it just go down? What's it do? It crosses the x-axis. It does. It crosses the x-axis. So, Kendall, based off Near's definition, can you label our y-axis for us? Our y-axis, babe. My handwriting, might, that might look like a little bit. 
it like a lot. Perfect. Does everybody agree? All right, so we're moving right on to x-axis. And this one should be easy, Jacob, because Nir's already given us a definition for a y-axis. So just think about x and y as opposites. So y was the vertical axis. What do you think the x-axis is? Think about the y-axis. Y is the this line right here that runs vertically, which means another word for vertically means up and down. It runs up and down. So sideways. If, sideways, excellent. Will you label the x-axis for us? <coughs> Perfect. Perfect. And I'm not going to go through each one of these individually. We're going to look at the word quadrant as a whole. Just what is a quadrant? Who thinks they know what a quadrant is? Josie, would you like to venture a guess at what you think a quadrant is? Okay. Both of the lines? It does include both lines. That's an excellent, excellent point. Kendall, what do you think a quadrant is? Let's help her out. The section of it is the section of the quadrant <laughs> coordinate plane. So how many quadrants do we have? Mason Ray? Four. We do have four. And I'm going to show you because they are labeled a little weird. Because you might think that it would start one, two, right? But it doesn't. It starts quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. Okay? And the good news for you all today is that we, we're focusing all of our energy today on quadrant rump, quadrant one, okay? Everything we do, we'll do, we'll do in quadrant rump, one. So each of our axes has specific points. And it's very simple, and I'm going to move our car down just a little bit. It's very simple to where this point is just one, two, three, four, five, Six and so on, okay? And the same thing goes up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. We've got all of our positives, so what do you think we're going to fill our next axis with? Near. Negative, exactly, and it's just negative one, negative two, negative three. And same thing. So instead of having our card, I'm just going to write origin right here. That is awesome. Who said that? Was that Jordan or Mason? Or Jacob or Mason? Jacob, awesome real, uh, connection there. It is exactly like number lines. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll use these numbers to help us plot our points. So let's think about it real fast. We've learned all kinds of different geo uh, different parts of geography and things that help us identify locations on Earth. What is one real life situation that you might use a coordinate plane? Mason. A map or an atlas, excellent. Or, what is this? A globe. What is on a globe that re would resemble a coordinate plane? Josie, what's on a globe that would resemble a coordinate plane? They run vertically and horizontally, and they tell us locations. The compass, it does, but it does that wouldn't, hmm? The equator is an example of one. What were those lines called? Kendall, you want to help her out? They are axis, but what are, near? can you help us out? Dig down deep. There are two sets of lines. We learned at the very beginning of the year, what are they called? What are they called, Mason B? If I, well, those are, those are examples of those lines. They start with an L. Latitude. Latitude and longitude are excellent examples of a coordinate plane. Because right now, you don't see all the lines, but look at this. This is a coordinate this is one quadrant of the coordinate plane. And 
it's like a, it's like the imaginary lines because our latitude and longitude. Can you see those lines on Earth? No, but they're an imaginary coordinate frame, right? They give us exact locations, and that's what the coordinate system does. So let's watch our brain pop video, and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Why does a robot keep beating me? Dear Tim and Moby, how do you convert data from a table to a graph? Thanks, Taylor. Well, to convert data to a graph from a table with values like this one, you need to know about coordinate planes. A plane is a flat surface with length and width, but no depth. In other words, it has two dimensions instead of three. And it has no edges, sort of like a piece of paper that goes on forever. Oh. So let's think about the coordinate plane. Our, our coordinate up there, that, the image up there, is, is only one section of coordinate plane? What is a coordinate plane, Mason? Uh, it has four sides and it goes on forever. It does, it goes on forever. So this whole image. And it could continue on and on and on. It just doesn't stop there. That's why I have the arrows at the end. They could continue on and on. But this whole image is the coordinate plane. Okay? I just want to make sure we, we hit that before we went on. Well, planes aren't real. They're imaginary models of space. <coughs> a coordinate plane is a plane overlaid with two perpendicular number lines. Those lines help you find any point on the plane. It's also known as a Cartesian plane, after René Descartes, the guy who developed the idea way back in 1637. Basically, he drew two perpendicular lines in the middle of a plane and called the place where the lines intersect the origin. One line represents the horizontal distance from the origin, and we call that the x-axis. The other line represents vertical distance from the origin, that's called the y-axis. These lines help us find our way around the plane. Well, everything starts from the origin. The coordinates, or the address of the origin, are 0, 0. That means to find the origin, you have to move 0 units horizontally and 0 units vertically. The set of numbers that describes a point is called an ordered pair because the order of the numbers matters. For instance, 2, 3 is different from 3, 2. The first number tells you the address of a point on the x-axis, while the second number tells you the address of a point on the y-axis. So, to find the point described by the ordered pair 2, 3, you'd start by looking at the first number, the x-coordinate. It tells you to go two units to the right. Next, you look at the second number, the y-coordinate, which tells you to go three units up. Now I'm at the point 2, 3. But if you were finding the point described by the ordered pair 3, 2, you start off by going 3 units to the right, and then 2 units up. We're in totally different places. Each section of the coordinate plane is called a quadrant, because there are four of them. You can always predict what quadrant a point will fall in by looking at the positive and negative numbers. Quadrant 1 has all the points with a positive x-coordinate and a positive y-coordinate, like 2, 3. Quadrant 2 has all the points with a negative x-coordinate and a positive y-coordinate, like negative 2, 3. Quadrant 3 has all the points with a negative x-coordinate and a negative y-coordinate, like negative 2, negative 3. And Quadrant 4... Yep, Quadrant 4 has all the points with a positive x-coordinate and a negative y-coordinate, like 2, negative 3. You can remember that X comes first because, well, X comes before Y in the alphabet. Nope, this doesn't help me win chess at all. Play again? Alright, so we got a little bit more information on the coordinate plane. Let's look at our anchor chart real fast and I'm going to have you relate it to real life in a way besides what we've already talked about as in our maps, our atlases, our latitude and longitude lines, okay? because we've already talked about that. So I want, while we're looking at that, while we're looking at our anchor chart, I want you to think in your mind about maybe a real life situation that is an example of a coordinate plane. But also be paying attention, okay? So a coordinate system is a method for finding points on a coordinate plane or a flat surface. Remember, a coordinate plane is a flat surface. 
I have examples of coordinate planes right here. Do you see, it's a flat surface. There's no, it's not 3D. There's no depth to it. So remember that. The y-axis moves vertically, and we've already talked about that. That means it runs up and down. Does it ever stop? No, it runs up and down continuously. It does not ever stop. The x-axis moves horizontally. If the y-axis moves up and down continuously and never stops, what do you think the x-axis is going to do? Mason B. Moves horizontally and never stops. Thank you for raising your hand. I really appreciate it. So, we plot points or coordinate pairs or ordered pairs, and that's all, all three are this, they're interchangeable. So we've got, and I'm going to write in our quadrant too because we want to plot points here. So they're called coordinate pairs because they're just pairs we plot on the coordinate plane, right? Uh, or they're called ordered pairs, and this is what we're going to, this is the word we are going to use today for these pairs of numbers, order pairs, okay? But I just wanted to make sure you knew that. These are interchangeable, coordinate pairs or order pairs. So we have some plots. We have some points plotted already, and I've made an example right here for you all, and I'll move it up so you can see it. And before we actually name these points, I'm going to go over how we name them. It's to name an ordered pair, first travel across the x-axis, then travel up the y-axis. List the points in that order. So in order to list these points, which axis do you travel across first, Kendall? The x-axis. Because the, the video gave you an example that in the alphabet, x comes before y. That's an excellent way to remember that. Or you can remember it that whenever you're playing basketball, can you, is it smart just to jump right here? You need to run first, right? You'll jump higher if you run first. So remember it that way. You run, can you run up? Can you run, can, can I run up? You'll never be able to run up. So you have to run, which will make you think about horizontally, you run horizontally before you can jump, okay? And I'll put that up here too. Either one of these is excellent ways to remember it. So you run before you jump. So we have the point, the ordered pair, two, four, right here. And there's a specific way you have to write ordered pairs. You can't just write two, four. Would you really know what that was? It almost looks like a 24 with a lot of space in between, doesn't it? So we have to write them in parentheses, separated by a comma. That is exactly how you have to write every ordered pair you will ever create. Exactly like that. What do you have to have in between, Jacob? No, you have to, what do you have to have the numbers in between? Parentheses, excellent. What do you separate the numbers with, Josie? A comma. This is how we write them. So, our ordered pair, we ran over two and we jumped up on the y-axis four. So, I want you to talk to your shoulder partner and I want you to look, Kendall and Josie, I want you to look at this point right here. And I want you to talk about what you think, how you're going to name this point. And then near and Mason B, I want you to look at this point and think about how you're going to name this point. Jacob and Mason, you're doing this point as well. So take a minute and talk to your shoulder buddy real fast. And you can use your math journals to write it in if you want. So think about it. Can you, how are you going to name that point? Your shoulder buddy about it. Make sure you're talking. It's okay. This is a time it's okay to talk. A lot of times I can't get you on a quit talking. Right, Mason? <laughs> so talk to your shoulder buddy about it.
Kendall and Josie, you've had a second to talk to your partners. I want you both to go up and I want you to label the point I assigned for you exactly how you're supposed to label it. And then you're going to explain it. Because you can't just, when Ms. Troutman starts saying, you can't just give me your answer. You have to start explaining why you gave me your answer. So tell me, tell us why you labeled it the way you did it and what you labeled it. We labeled it six to five on the nine. Awesome. Because the x-axis is on five and the y-axis is on nine. Good. And what did you, which point did you find first? Which, where did you go first? You went to the x-axis first. Excellent. So you all can sit back down. Jacob and Mason, you all are going to go up. The marker is on the board. And you're going to label the point I gave you. Let me see yours to make sure we're at the same spot. Good. I like how you added your last parenthesis. Because if you didn't have that last parenthesis, is this the same as that? Nope. Alright, so you got it labeled how? Okay, so what goes around the tin tin? What are those two little things that go around the tin tin? What are they called? No, it starts with a P. Good, Jacob. So what are they called, Mason? Parentheses. And what is separating our tin and tin? A comma. So, Jacob, tell me why you all labeled that point as 10, 10. Because it's on the 10 down there. Well, when you say down there, where is that? I don't know. Down there on your shoe? On what? What is this called? Which is called the? Look at our chart. Good, the x-axis. Remember, we can't just say down there because some people don't know what down there is. If the more specific you are, the better other people understand. All right, Mason, so tell me why the next number you chose was a 10 as well. Because it's on the y-axis um, line and it says uh, around the 10. Excellent. It is at 10, 10. Good job. I'm so proud of you all. So before we move on, Miss, you know Miss Robin loves clickers. So we have some more Flickers questions. And I need to exit out of frame. So go ahead and get your Flickers card for me. And let's look at the question on the board. So this is going to come from information we have just learned. So the x-axis is, is the x-axis A? Horizontal or B, vertical? Hold your card high so I can see it. I'm so proud of how well you all are paying attention. Oh, Mason, I couldn't see yours, bud. Lamp. Mason, I'm going to start calling you Mason number one and Mason number two. All right. Let's see. Everybody, we've got all of our eggs in one basket right here. Everybody said A. Do you think you're right? Yes. No. Awesome job. We are right. So let's move straight on. That tells me you all are paying attention very well. Let's move straight on to our next question. Sorry. There are, oh, there are only positive values on a coordinate plane. And this comes directly from our Brain Pop video. Is it true or false? A for true, B for false. All right. Again, we've got all of our eggs in one basket. I sure hope we're right. We are. Good job, guys. I'm so proud of you. And then we have one more. In an ordered pair, the point on the y-axis comes first. Is that true or is that false? Hold it up high. Think about it. The order in an ordered pair, the point on the y-axis comes first. Is that true or false? All right. 
I wonder why, I, I think it picked up the double number. All right, it is false. Good. What comes first in an ordered pair, Josie? Um, X. X comes <coughs> first. So you can put your clickers down. And as far as the positive and numbers, negative numbers go, let's look at that in just one second. Let's label our quadrants. So, Mason Beats. Looking at our numbers on this x-axis and this y-axis, what do you know about the numbers that are going to be in quadrant one? They're all positive. So our x is going to be positive and our y is going to be positive. Mason R. Mason number two. Looking at quadrant two, look at our numbers on our x-axis and look at our numbers on our y-axis. What do you know about the numbers that are going to be make up our ordered pairs in quadrant two? Well, some of them are going to be positive. So look at these. Look at the x. Are these positive? No. So what do you know about the x point? It's going to be. It's going to be negative. And what did you say about the y point? It's going to be positive. A little trick to remember about the y axis if the numbers are on the top, if they're going up, like you're having a good day, it's positive, right? You're having a good day, it's, it's positive. If the numbers are going down, when you feel down, it's what? It's negative. You've got negative feelings. So it's going to be negative if it's going down. All right, so Jacob, we've got quadrant three right over here. Looking at our axis, our x and our y, what do you know about the numbers on for the x point? <coughs> it's going to be negative. And what do you know about the, num the number for our y point? It's going to be negative as well. Josie. Quadrant four. What do you notice about the number for our x point? Looking at the x axis. Oh, look at the x axis. It's going to be positive. What do you notice about the numbers on the y axis? Are they positive, like up, or are they negative, going down? They're going to be negative. Your y point is going to be a negative number. So right now we're going to practice creating an ordered pair, and we're going to practice plotting it. So you're going to work with your partner again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two dice, and we're going to do this real fast. We're going to make five points. Oh, and just leave them right where they are, okay? Five points. And... What you're going to do is you're going to roll one. You're going to write that number down. That's going to be, and actually let me make this a little easier. Green is your x-axis. Red is your y-axis, okay? Green is your x-axis. Red is your y. And then what colors do you have? Green and red? Green is your x. Red is your y. So I'll put this up here. Green equals x. Red equals y. And then you're just going to take turns creating those points. I want you to write your ordered pair points on this index card. And you should have five. After you're done, five, you need five ordered pairs. So you can start that right now. Hmm? You write it on that, yes. Make sure your name is on it. I need five ordered pairs. And actually, I have enough dice for everybody to be able to do it. So, or how about, I only got one more here. You can do it. And you, you all can share. Because these are all white dice. So you can start making your ordered pairs. And remember, I'm going to be checking to make sure they're written correctly. And you could actually, here. You get to choose. You can choose whichever one is your X and whichever one is your Y, okay? You two here. That way you don't not sit and wait.
Remember how they're written. I'm coming around to check to make sure we're writing them correctly. Don't forget the ending parenthesis. Good job. So, before we go to the next part of this activity, Mason reminded me that I forgot to let you all talk about a real life situation. Somebody raise your hand, one of you raise your hand and tell me what according, what this reminded you of in real life. Kendall. Construction. How so? Because it's for blueprints, you need to know where it's everything you need to go. Excellent. I didn't even think about that. Mason Ryder. Could have used it for your science fair. How so? For your graph, that's an excellent point. For your graph, typically on graphs, what do you do? You see this whole coordinate plane? You see this whole coordinate plane on a graph? You well, you could, but do you typically see it when you're graphing? What do you typically see? Only, only one, which is called a one quadrant. Good. Mason B, what do you think? Good. These are all excellent points. Josie? Like a cross. Like a cross? Okay, like a cross you would see. Um, now let's talk specifically about the actual grid. What does the actual grid remind you of? A square. Huh? A giant square. It does remind you of a giant square. The graph papers we use. But what about, has anybody ever played Battleship? Oh, this is exactly like Battleship. Like searching where the home is. Exactly. You you place your ships in different locations on your grid, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one of those grids is like a quadrant. So you may have your ship right here, and you're identifying an exact location. That's what these ordered pairs are. These are exact locations within 
our quadrants within our grid. What about checkers and checks? Are that don't they look like this board right here? So later on during this unit on the coordinate plane, I found a coordinate plane battleship. And if we have time, we're going to get to play it, okay? It's really cool. Not today. We won't have time today. All right, so let's go back to this activity. Now I'm going to pass you out one of these quadrants. And what you're going to do is I'm also going to give you a dry erase marker. You're going to trade your order pairs with your partner. So go ahead and trade with each other and start plotting their points. When you get all of their points plotted, raise your hand and let me know. <coughs> That's all right. So as soon as you get all of your partner's points plotted, raise your hand. label your points for me? Because a lot of times on your grids, it helps to label your ordered pair so that we know your exact location. Because some a lot of times you can do a coordinate plane like this and plot points and it can create an image and it could be just a simple shape. It could be with the your order pair as the points that you connect your lines to, or it could do like it could make a really cool image. And we're gonna talk about that more in later lessons. You're done? So real fast while you're working, listen right here, okay? Look at me for one second so I know you're listening. <clears throat> Look at me for one second so I know you're listening. All right, I'm going to send you out to the hall. Did you notice a big coordinate plane out there? Yeah. The big quadrant. It's not a full coordinate plane, it's a quadrant. And it's only our quadrant one. Well, there are a lot of points plotted already out there. So what you're going to do, this is our assessment, okay? What you're going to do is you are going to find the point I've given you, and you're going to write the order pair. And as you finish, I'll give you this so that you can go out and do it. So you can go out and do it. And remember, wait, wait, wait. Sit down for just one second. I almost forgot. Before we go out, let's review hallway expectations. What is our voice level supposed to be, Mason Ryder? Level one, which means no talking. Are our hands supposed to be on the walls? No. Okay. And I can hear you. Our door is open. I can hear you out there, okay? So if we break those expectations, we'll flip down on the chart. You can go ahead and go here. Are you finished? Good job. All right. And you, and you won't have the same point, so there's no use talking about it because you won't have any of the same points as here. There you go. Go on out. And you can take your math journal and that will help you to remember how to write an order pair. Mason, are you finished? Join me out in the hall with your pencil, okay?
towards a point and write your order pair. Excellent job. And it is okay if you need the hard surface just for a second to write your order pair because you're not actually trying to touch the walls. You're just using it as a resource. I love how hard you're working out here. Thank you for following hallway expectations. 